Today we're going to look at something that a lot of people don't know or haven't used before, which is doing unit testing or at least config testing using PowerShell. And you can do that directly from the command line or through scripts, functions, um, there's actually almost all options available. Uh, and it's done in several ways. So you start off first with the description. So you describe what it is that you're going to do. So basically the test. Then you have a context. So this is the subcategory of your test. So in this case, we're just going to write a very simple one that checks if the server name, or in this case, workstation name, matches what we expect it to be in the test. And then for the actual test, we have an it. Now think of it kind of like a it is or it should be kind of to get a bit of context to it. Um, and then what you do is you describe effectively the true or false value. Now this can be an exact value or it can be a true or false return statement. So in this case, we're going to just go ahead and create one. So we say computer name should be equal to blah, blah, blah. And again, the first line is just the description of what it's checking. So if it fails or if it's successful, you at least know what test it was doing at the time. As you can imagine, it's not much good if you have 20, 30 checks and you don't know which one failed. So it's kind of important to have some context or at least uh, naming that makes sense in your test. So. On our next uh, bit, we're going to enter the, the context of what it is that we're testing. So this is where we actually say, OK, uh, this value. So in this case, we'll say the environment variable, the computer name. And then we're going to go ahead and say should be and then equal to this value. Now, it could be a dynamic value uh, variable, or in this case, it's going to be manually entered this exact machine name. And if it was not um, true, then it will fail. If it's true, it will succeed. Simple enough, right? And you can have this done through variables. You can have it do through true and false statements. You can also kind of build out a bit of logic behind it, where you could have multiple ones based on a variable. Um, and then we just close this out. Let's see, our test is gone. It's running 134 milliseconds, and computer name should be equals to and is completed green. Now let's look at a slightly more complex version of this. So in the tradition of here's one I did earlier, we can say uh, use a variable in this case uh, b computer. So we can actually run the test remotely. And I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of things. I'm going to check that Chocolaty is installed. Uh, I'm going to check that uh, Chocolaty server is installed. I'm going to check that the port is listening, all these kind of things. And I'm going to do that in one hit. So that's just going to go ahead and run. And we'll see if any of these fail or if they're all successful. So in this case, one of the tests failed, which is good. That proves, amongst other things, that not everything is successful and it proves what a failed output looks like. Now I know that it was going to fail, so that's cheating on my part, but I wanted to kind of prove the point. Um, it's also good that when we have the successful and failed tests later on, that you can see both options. So now we're going to go ahead and save this and run it as a script, because I want to show you how this responds in different ways. So we've tried now directly from the command line. We're going to try now to run it as a script, um, and so you can see the, the different ways it, the output is formulated. So we're just going to change um, this into a parameter so that if we wanted to, we can put in a different machine name, etc. Nothing super complicated. Now that we have the machine name as a variable, that we can use as a param or parameter rather that is then used as a variable, we can effectively run this test now remotely against any machine that we wanted to. So I can do the unit test and I can say computer equals and then in theory I can pick any machine on my network. And then I can go and check whether Chocolaty is running successfully, all the ports, etc. So this becomes very powerful in terms of being able to test against remote machines. But we're still not into a unit test. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, please do remember to give us a like and, as always, subscribe. Now, there is a, another way of running this. Uh, we can actually do it as a full-blown test 
with the output and also logging. So for that we're going to use the invoke and just keep in mind here before we, we get to this this only works on Windows 10 and 2016 Windows otherwise you will need to download the module separately but anyway going ahead uh, our pesta here so um, we're then going to tell it hey run this script with this parameter and I want to show you this as an example because this might seem very logical we're just passing the script and the parameter but I want to show you what will happen when we do this because first of all you'll get an output at the end and not just the test but also the failed successful skipped pending inconclusive and one of the things that you'll see here is all of them are zeros so in the context of the test that we just ran it didn't run them now one of the reasons for this is because of it, the way that it works and it's expecting um, variables to be entered so what we're going to do is rather than do it the complicated way I'm going to just going to create a splatter so that's a straight hash table with the values so one of the values is we have a path so path is going to equal our script uh, in this case it happens to be local to the folder in so we'll just do dot slash then unit test dot ps1 um, the next one is going to be the variables for our script so in this case we enter param or parameter rather um, and that's going to equal the, the content of what we're going to enter as the parameter now in this case um, because we are effectively filling it in as an array item because you might have multiple um, parameters so in this case we only have one but if you were to have more then they would fit all into that one parameter value so basically a hash table inside a hash table um, so we then run that splatter we just confirm that that's the output and that it looks good and then we're going to go ahead and run the test again and we're going to push all of that into the one command now you don't have to do it this way you could type it out the long way but I am lazy and I want it to kind of fit all on screen and this time you'll notice we use the uh, slash script and we're just going to fill the splatter into there so that we get all of our nice little output and what you see at the end of this is unlike the previous attempt we now see our passed and failed which we didn't have before and that's kind of a much better output for this kind of thing as it allows us to go ahead and generate proper output now there's another thing I want to show you which is the test name and the output XML files so I'm going to go ahead and output uh, the file so give it a file name and you can then choose whether you use uh, legacy output which depending on your scenario may or may not be your desired XML format or you can use the um, a new uh, test format and what I want to show you here is if you use test name because it's already running from a script you'll again end up with zero outputs tests are not needed when you've got scripts so just keep that in mind so we remove the test name um, and we just go ahead and run the script a bit with the output to the XML and then we can go look at the XML file afterwards and confirm what the state was of the test so you don't need to like hover around the console all the time we can actually just go to the XML output and you can see there in a nicely XML formatted uh, whether it was successful whether it failed uh, the results basically of all of the tests and that's a particularly good way of being able to generate the first layer so the next one could be that you then ingest these XML files and then have them stored as a whether the test was successful whether it was not and then you can have them running scheduled against your code or against your servers whatever your desired unit testing is um, you see how powerful this can become quite quickly now hopefully you've enjoyed learning something about unit testing with PowerShell if you have, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for new content.